And it, I love the fact that you communicate with everybody on an individual basis, but do you also see that there's a need that you you have to get out there with a message to everybody so that everyone else can see that you're with them? I mean, it's just, uh, and, and how do you stay ahead of the pack whenever you, during this copycat time? Yeah, you know, I, I think a couple of things. I think, I think one is, yes, there is a place for that messaging, but don't, you know, in Sandler, we've got a rule. If your competition is doing it, stop doing it right away. And what we mean by that is don't sound like everybody else, right? So find your unique voice. But I think the other thing is, if you're going to have a mass message, have it actually mean something, right? Don't, you know, this, you know, and, and backing up to the, the, the beginning stuff, right? So saying, you know, we take COVID-19 very, COVID very seriously and we're doing everything we can to ensure the safety of our employees and our client, right? That boilerplate stuff, what does that really tell me? Instead, tell me what you're actually doing, right? Give me some specifics. What are you, what are you doing? And, and, you know, the other thing I would say is in terms of this mass messaging, your website is so crucial that it is updated to reflect what you are actually doing and what's happening. It ought to be easy to see, right? And as things shift and change. So for instance, if your hours have changed, that should be easy to see as soon as people look you up, right? Hey, we've got new hours or, you know, we're, we're now available, you know, by phone 24 hours a day at this number, what, whatever you've actually, what are actually doing, make that really obvious for people. Uh, because one of the biggest things, you know, that I heard from businesses in those first following months was, hey, we've got people calling us saying we didn't realize you were still open, right? Well, shame on them for not putting that message out there and making it extremely clear that we're open for business. You know, we shifted on a dime like that. We were doing 40 to 50 percent of our training virtually before mid-March, just as a, you know, sort of the way we are doing things because we've got diverse, you know, sales teams and management teams spread all over the country that we work with. But we had to change immediately. And, you know, we reached out to everybody and said, nothing's changing. Our schedule's not changing. We're just going to be talking, you know, via computer. And you know, we're still, we're still going to do this the same and this the same and this. But that had to be a real concerted effort of instant communication. So we didn't have that week or two where everybody's like, I don't know, what are we going to do? What's happening? Uh, and so, so that, that becomes crucial. Well, and, and I think oftentimes too, it's like, one-on-one -on -one messages that should be one-on-one -on -one, mass where mass should be right and i think oftentimes people will flip-flop that which is so unnecessary it's like if you like it's not hard to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you i'm not saying sit there and have a four hour long conversation call the person talk to them for 30 seconds let them know this thing and call it a day right and just like you said you know there's businesses that were open that they didn't know about like and they didn't even tell people like let people know the most important stuff and go with, go with that. Uh, it's just, it's incredibly interesting to me also from the, the copycat game. Uh, I call it the black Friday ad, right? You see a bunch of people, they get the black Friday ads. They're excited about it for a little bit. And then you get to the fourth person and then you, know, you see the fourth message and you're like, I'm over this, right? We have such uh, a rapid acceleration of this. I feel like that's now the new word of the day from Chad. Acceleration, rapidness of this. Like you're seeing that every week now with something yeah. different. It's just like copycat, 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 copycat. You know, a couple every, weeks ago. Every single car commercial is exactly the same right now. Well, it's now you're crazy. seeing people that are trying to replicate the Zoom ads where it's like, oh, here, here's the sticker of the, uh, or, uh, I don't know what it is. It's, you got, it's like the new Brady Bunch thing that I, I started when I talked about how people were pushing out the Zoom pictures, but now you're seeing the commercials, the actual broadcast commercials that have the main thing up. And then on the sidebar, they'll have other people talking. It's like, now other people are doing that. It's like, come on, guys. Like, have some sort of originality built in there. <sighs> people. It's amazing. And, and I'm going to go back to this thought. It's not amazing. Yeah. It's, it's laziness. <laughs> You're, you're right. But but here's what I'm going to say. I, that You get so much more mileage out of picking up the phone and asking someone, hey, just thought about you based on everything I'm seeing that's going on. Just wanted to let you know I'm thinking about you. 
is there any way that I could be helpful right now? Right. Or is there, is there something that, that uh, is particularly challenging for you right now? Uh, and I, you know, I'd be curious to know what that is. And if there's any way I can help, let me know just that sort of a, a you know, invested in others approach to me is worth a thousand times more than, Hey, let's get a marketing department to craft a really slick looking, you know, Instagram post or something um, that's, that's going to go out there because it's, it, it's, you know, how is that hitting you? How is this current scenario hitting you? That simple question, I think, you know, opens up somebody to say, wow, you know, Tim actually cares, I guess. Let me, let me, let me, let me share with him. Let me talk to him. And, and it may open up business opportunities and it may not, but what it does is it, your credibility now goes through the roof. You know, what I've told so many people is a lot of what we were doing, especially in those first few months, right? You know, I feel now we're, we're coming through some of this, you know, but, but in those first couple of months, I kept telling people, look, you're not even so much doing what you're doing now to try to win the business now. What you're doing, what you're doing now for how you're perceived on the other side of this, right? You know, that needs to be a lot of what your focus is. It's not just well, gee, are we going to, you know, be able to to add or grow or, you know, it, some of that could happen. But the real important, the real reason to have those conversations and stay in front of your prospects and your clients is so when we're through this in two, three months and looking back on it, you're the first person they think of that says, you know what, Zach was there checking in on me where incumbent A, you know, I I barely ever heard from them, right? They I wasn't even sure they were open because even though we've been using them for years, we barely heard from them. No, but they ever. sent out that they sent out that newsletter. That's right. Don't That's you right. worry. Also, when you get someone on the phone, guess what? You understand context, right? You send an email. It's like, well, I think this is their tone that they're saying, but I don't really know. I think this is what they're saying. Oh, they said the, but they meant the. They said tomato, but they meant tomato. They said orange, and they meant banana. I don't know. I just made that last one up. It sounded fun, but I mean, context is so important. And so even, even when I'm um, coaching clients through from a sales perspective, I'm like, Hey, like maybe you should get them on the phone because this email is looking like the 77,000 other people that are is emailing them. I don't think what you're saying is necessarily that bad, but to them without the context of you actually having that conversation with them, it's looking like another like control art, control alt delete disaster and it's just like let me get out of this and so by being on the phone with someone by having them in their own one-on-one -on -one scenario you can get a lot better results and i think all three of us believe in that kind of um, mindset I, I was thinking the other day about even like start norfolk stuff when i did start norfolk way back when by the way i haven't done that in five years and some people still think i'm doing it which is still pretty funny it means you <laughs> built something pretty powerful there um What's interesting, though, is I had a ton of one on one conversations with people. I would individually reach out to people all the time. I would say like 90% of the ticket sales in the first probably one through three start Norfolk were done because of one on one conversations that I had with people. And I think it's incredibly valuable. And I, I, I'm sad that potentially that day where you can't have that one on one uh, opportunity with people would go away. I don't think it's ever going to go away, but I, I would be sad to see that that day would ever it, it, uh, that, that day would the happen. loyalty that you build is huge and you're not yeah. you're not you're not, not even selling not just another email right yeah 